Sie Ohren lenken. Mr. Speaker, sir, given my background at the Singapore Economic Development Board and as a startup founder, I'm always excited by the proliferation of innovative technologies in Singapore. It is this appetite for and dedication to innovation that has put us on the map for seven consecutive years as Asia Pacific's most innovative nation, according to the Global Innovation Index. Imagine, Mr. Speaker, sir, being able to speak into existence virtually any object the mind can conceive. This is the enormous potential of the innovative technology we know as 3D printing. It has birthed communities fascinated by 3D printing's ability to unleash their creativity with an endless practical applications. Other than formal settings such as professional manufacturers and designers or even academic institutions, 3D printing has found a place at the heart of several interest groups that tap on its versatility. Those passionate about drones, e-scooters, Nerf, Warhammers, even baking, and so many more have found 3D printing to add incredible value to their hobbies and passions. Beyond its its obvious economic benefits and industrial, industrial uses, 3D printing has also been an added catalyst for hobbyists resourceful enough to tap on it. For example, the NERF, spelled N-E-R-F, community in Singapore. They have been around for many years and this traditionally has been a competitive game involving the use of foam-based weaponry fired from primarily foam-based blasters. Hobbyists seek out and improvise their own arenas of play in parks or other spaces where games are hosted and played by those within the Nerf community. Those who, uh, those who participate find this an exciting way to keep active and creative. In the past couple of years, 3D printing has made itself a staple in the Nerf community where about half of those in the estimated 5,000 strong community own a 3D printer. The technology allows hobbyists to forge more powerful blasters that greatly enhances their game. While store-bought blasters typically fire at about 80 to 100 feet per second, our resourceful hobbyists are known to modify blasters that propel their foam darts up to 150 to 200 feet per second. Also, modifications to the aesthetics and performance of blasters are shared among the community to encourage innovation and celebrate each other's achievements. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm not sure about you, but as I learned about this, I was delighted. The government spends years and pours loads of resources for Singaporeans to pick up new technologies, but here we have a community that has eagerly adopted the exciting technology of 3D printing as an integral part of their interest. More than that, I'm heartened by the community spirit they display in wanting to be responsible citizens as well. For example, modifications to blasters aesthetics that paint them black are frowned upon, as such realism might cause panic to the public. Hobbyists actively and respons uh, responsibly refrain from such realism so as not to put the wider Nerf community's interests at risk. And that is indeed thoughtful of the community. The 3D printing community has also come under the spotlight for good reason during the pandemic. I would like to raise the example of one good Gerald Yeo from my constituency. Gerald's interest in 3D printing began when he had to print parts for a robotics competition in school and since, then, um, and since then, during the pandemic, he put his 3D printing skills to good use as he printed face shields in bulk that were donated to our constituency to help reduce the spread of the virus. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to make the case for the 3D printing community and indeed the passions of researchers, inventors and adventurers that even as we ramp up 
regulations on this versatile technology, we are careful not to set a precedent for further restrictions that might stifle the creative winds taking this community by storm. It is easy to be afraid of the unknown. As with exciting new technologies such as 3D printing, so often in the face of uncertainty and what-ifs, our first foot out the door is to come down hard with regulation. When I consulted those in the 3D printing scene, from researchers, inventors to hobbyists, I found that many felt that the idea that one with malicious intent would resort to using home-based 3D printing to produce dangerous weapons such as guns would be a pretty distant one. Many pointed to lower hanging fruit such as pipe guns given the impracticality uh, impra of using a household appropriate 3D printer to print functional weapons. Not only would important aspects of a functional weapon such as ammunition be quite impossible to forge using 3D printers, 3D printed weapons themselves, according to the experts, would be unable to withstand the pressure of firing a bullet due to the way the plastic is layered in the 3D printing process. One researcher from the 3D printing community even remarked, they had better chance making a bow and arrow when asked about those with malicious intent. At this juncture, I would like to assure everyone that I am not playing down the possibility that on an off chance, someone might indeed 3D print a weapon and use it for harm. However, while such fears are warranted and everything should be done to curb any instances of such behaviour, it must be asked, are there better ways to do so? As the honourable members, uh, Mr. Cheryl Taha and Mr. Melvin Yong had mentioned, not only would it be extremely challenging to monitor the internet traffic of those with 3D printers, an implausible response time of mere hours, if not minutes, would be required to intervene between the download of a 3D weapons blueprint to its production. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, I reiterate that it is with great caution that we must proceed with the regulation of 3D printing, lest we produce an unwanted chilling effect on the use of such innovative technologies. Proposed controls on 3D printing activities reminded me of the controls we placed on colour copiers from 1979 to the late 1990s. Yes, colour copiers. This is too familiar a tune. These same controls on colour copiers were lifted also because of their onerous restrictions, making way for innovation in counterfeit resistant currency notes in Singapore. With the eminent difficulty of enforcement, potential futility of regulation, and stifling of a vibrant community with controls on 3D printing, we must consider alternatives. In this vein, I must inquire, even as we move to enact heavier regulations from above, have we been conscientious to fly low to the ground and explore community alternatives? With an already active community eager to facilitate the free flow of ideas and pool resources for the furthering of their hobbies, initiatives towards sharing of designs and builds would not be too far-fetched. We have already seen several maker spaces, which are public workshops with 3D printing capabilities, where people can come and realize their designs in community, tapping on one another's experiences and resources. These spaces are also good opportunities for the education of budding 3D printing enthusiasts to uphold community guidelines as the NERVS community compromise on the realism of their blasters to prevent public panic. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to end off my speech with fair warning that regulation without education and awareness puts us on a slippery slope. Should this bill fail to provide an answer for the actual threat it is seeking to defuse, we set a precedent for shackling any novel community at the slightest hint of danger. This bill must live up to the responsibility it seeks to hold over the 3D printing community lest we end up fighting a battle that simply did not exist in the first place. This concern withstanding, I support the bill.